I want to talk about how to have a straighter, more accurate arm swing. This is me in the fall of 2019 having a very unstraight, inaccurate arm swing. So you can see that ball goes way, way, way outside. This is, I think, the next shot. It's pulled far inside. You know, so what's going on is my arm swing is too loopy. Right after the push away, it's kind of going away from me and then around and back behind my back. So because my arm swing is so loopy, it's hard to be consistent. It's hard to focus in on my target on the top of the backswing. And that's why I'm spreading the ball all over the place. This next shot is three years later, the fall of 2022. And look at how much straighter my arm swing is on this shot. Instead of the ball going out and around from away from my head after the push away, it's sliding underneath my head. In this shot, which I'm going to pause right here, you can see that right after the push away, I am really throwing that ball outside far from underneath my head where it should be. Here's another shot from 2022 where you see that the ball ends up much closer to my head right after the push away. And here's a direct side-by-side -side comparison, and you can see in the red box that in 2019 the ball was like halfway away from being fully under my head, and in 2022 it's pretty much directly under my head. So like, what's going on with this? Now I already made a video about spine tilt. And understanding some unique aspects of spine tilt and how it pertains to a one hand no thumb bowler is essential. But if you look at these side by side comparisons of me in 2019 and 2022, it's not the spine tilt. My spine tilt is actually uh, about the same in both of these shots. For this part of the video, I'm just going to demo some things from my bedroom because it's a lot easier to do it here where it's quiet than in an actual bowling alley. First, I'm going to show some things with the ball drill with a thumb hole, and I'm going to go to a ball without a thumb hole to show some of the differences and what can be causing a wild, inaccurate arm swing when you take the thumb out of the ball. Now, with the thumb in the ball, it's pretty easy to have a straight arm swing. I can put my hand under the ball, and there's my straight arm swing. I could hold the ball to the side like this, and there's my straight arm swing. I can even, you know, do something which is really inappropriate, like putting my hands on top of the ball, which would be for which would make for horrible bowling, but I can still have a straight arm swing because my thumb is stabilizing the ball no matter what I'm doing. No one has a truly straight arm swing during their entire approach. A good, accurate arm swing for the most part is something relatively straight on the push away and going back. There's a bit of a change of direction at the top of the back swing where you look at your target and then you go forward towards the target. So it's really kind of like straight, tight figure eight, and then straight again. But it has to be controlled. You don't want to see the balance arm waving around doing crazy stuff. And you don't want to see your body going around contorting in different ways in order to try to maintain control of the ball. You want to have a smooth controlled um, approach the whole way through. Let's take a ball that doesn't have a thumb hole in it. And I want to be able to hold this ball and have a straight, accurate arm swing. Well, I can hold the ball like this with my hand under it. And the way to tell if the hand is under the ball is really the um, index finger. Because if you just look at the way you're holding um, this right now, if I put my hand out, you can see the index finger is the bottom. It might seem a little awkward looking at it head on, like the digits going into the ball should be the bottom. But no, um, the fingers that go into the ball are really the side the index finger is the bottom. So if I put my hand under the ball, I can easily have a straight arm swing. But what happens if instead of holding the ball this way, I just turn it a little bit. Now if I let go of the ball with my left hand, it calms right down because I don't have a th my thumb in the ball. What this means is that if instead of holding the ball this way, if I decide that I'm going to hold the ball a little bit like this or this, then I can't have a straight accurate arm swing. Because if I'm holding the ball this way, the only way for me to swing the ball is to go around in a motion like this, to, using centripetal force to keep the ball, you know, in my hand. And if I don't do this turning motion, the ball is going to drop right down to the ground. Now, not only is my arm curving around in an erratic way that's going to be hard to control and repeat shot after shot, but 
you can often see like the whole torso, the whole chest is going back and forth. It's all to get this tri centripetal force to make sure the ball isn't falling. And this is what's going to create a very horrible, inconsistent, <laughs> erratic arm swing. If someone really wants to learn how to bowl this way, one hand without their thumb, and they just kind of want to do this, the most important fundamental that they can learn is how do you hold the ball in a secure fashion. And you know, once you get that down, everything else becomes much easier. Unfortunately, it's not so simple to just you know explain one way of doing it because everyone has a different body, everyone has a different hand, and what you see a lot of variation in some of the things that good one hand no thumb bowlers do. But also, if you look carefully at what they do, you're also going to see some um, common themes show up over and over again. So I, I'm going to go through just a couple of those right now. Um, first of all, the um, ball weight is held probably between the thumb and the index finger. Like this creates like a bit of a webbing and the ball weight can go down into it. So you want to also have this full external rotation. So this is external rotation. This is internal rotation. Doing this motion, internal rotation, that's your release. That's what you do only at the point of release. The weight of the ball on the forearm is held on the outside of the forearm. So that's what I do. I kind of turn the ball this all the way this way, so the weight is falling on the outside of the forearm there, and I also have the weight between the index finger and the thumb. And that allows me to be fully under the ball in a secure manner. Something else that you'll see is a bend in the elbow. I'm just going to pick up the other ball for a second. If you're using a ball that's still with a thumb in it, it's very easy to use gravity to assist your swing. In fact, that's how thumb bowlers are taught to do it. It's very easy to do this and let gravity bring the ball up and down. That's because as this ball is dropping, the ball is under the hand and the weight of the ball is just going to drive everything up. So that's very easy. If you don't have your thumb in the ball, it changes the physics a lot because now instead of gravity driving the ball down and up, gravity is pushing all the weight of the ball into your elbow and the wrist. And if you stick the ball out like this, you're not going to gain momentum for gravity to pull the ball up. That's just going to put a tremendous amount of force on the wrist and the elbow joint. So, um, Sometimes you'll see people kind of start their one hand no thumb approach by pushing it out like this and doing some of this thing. Uh, I, I would really, um, personally, I would really caution against developing a game like that because it's going to put a tremendous amount of stress on your arm. And there really is no um, mechanical advantage in doing this. It's just going to be very weak. If you have some bend in the elbow, then you can much more easily cradle the, the ball. This is a cradle motion and pull it up a bit. This is a much more muscled arm swing than if you have your thumb in the ball. Maintaining external rotation of your hand and wrist during the entire approach until the point of release. I'm going to pick up a dumbbell here because I think it's a little easier to explain. In external rotation, again, is how the ball is held with the hand under the ball. A lot of times in bowling, you'll hear people talk about playing the inside of the ball. That, that means that your hand is really externally rotated with the fingers getting under the ball as much as possible. Now, this is important for people who are bowling with their thumb because go having more external rotation right before you're going to release means that your fingers are under it and you can turn around it a lot more and get a lot more power. And that's the same is true if you're bowling without your thumb. The more under the ball you are, the more you're going to get around it, the more rev rate you're going to have, the more powerful your release is going to be. However, there's something particularly horrible about playing the outside of the ball if you don't have your thumb in this. Again, just to pick up the ball with, with the thumb drilled in it, Again, if I'm at the top of my backswing and I go into this early internal rotation, I can still control the ball. I might have a weak release, but I'm not going to drop the ball. I'm not going to do stupid things with my body in order to maintain control of the ball. I could still have like a simple, like old school suitcase style release. If I don't have my thumb in the ball and I'm on the top of my backswing, and I, I can't obviously hold the ball up that way, 
Um, just if this is a ball, and at the top of the backswing, instead of maintaining this external rotation, if I go into this early internal rotation, then all of a sudden the ball wants to slip out of my hand on the top of the backswing. And the way someone is going to save that is by pushing the ball forward. You're going to notice this type of shovel release where they shove the ball forward and, and towards the left right, for a right-handed bowler. And that's because, you know, they, they just don't know how to hold on to the ball. Or if you're using a ball that's too heavy, it causes this internal rotation. And that's really going to mess up the release and accuracy. And I'm going to go into a little demonstration of that um, about right now. These shots are going all the way back to 2018, like the, literally the first week that I was no thumb bowling. And you can see I'm going into this very early internal rotation at the top of my backswing, going to like a very early release motion. That's because I can't hold on to the ball. So because I can't hold on to the ball, I'm turning my wrist and then the, I'm just ending up shoving the ball forward. Now, if this is like first, second week learning how to bowl this way, of course, these things are going to happen. But this is an absolute atrocious garbage release. At this point, I've seen multiple people, whether online or in person, develop this shovel type release. And I think the problem comes from two sources. First of all, there's really a lack of education out there on how to bowl one hand without your thumb. So everyone is just trying to figure it out by themselves. Um, the second thing is probably using a ball that's too heavy too quickly. And you know, even if over time someone develops the arm strength to use that heavier ball, you don't want to teach yourself this really improper ball motion because then you'll just continue to use the improper motion with the heavier ball, even if now you can't support the weight. So I'm going to jump from video of the first day of me bowling this way to Tom Doherty because that's of course a fair comparison. And we're going to look at this video and pay attention to how well he keeps his hand under the ball during the entire approach until the point of release. I'm going to look at a couple of still images. Here he is early into the backswing and you can see the hand is under the ball and the ball is under the shoulder. Those arrows there are just pointing out where the index finger is um, pointed. And you can see as he goes up to the top of the backswing, his hand is actually going into full external rotation and you'll see as he faces his target, the index finger and the hand is just getting more and more behind him. And this external rotation is maintained all the way until release. And when he's releasing the ball, right at the start, you can see not only are the fingers way under the ball and he's playing the inside, but his hand is behind the ball and pointed in the direction he wants to throw it. In comparison, this is me a couple years ago. As I'm about to go into release, before I'm actually turning my hand, you can see that while my fingers are under the ball, my hand is pointed left. And that means that I'm going to lose power and control as I try to drive the ball out towards the right. In comparison, here's Tom Doherty right before he initiates the release. Not only is his hand under the ball, but his hand is facing his target. So here's video of me with an old release with my hand to the side of the ball. And while I can hook it, that ball is going to lack speed and the ability to project it down lane. And this is recent video of me doing a much better job at keeping the hand behind the ball. This is a video that's been on YouTube for some time. And although in many ways he bowls very differently than Tom Doherty, I'm going to go over some key points where he's doing many of the same things. And what we want to do is look at really good one-hand no thumb bowlers and figure out what are the common threads. What are they all doing that's really good, that's making them good bowlers? What I want to point out is how much his hand is under the ball and then the ball is under the shoulder. So it's a very strong cradle. And look at how he goes into more and more of getting under the ball of that external rotation as he's going up to the height of his backswing. This is a still shot of him at the height of his backswing and you can see that his hand is completely behind the ball and he's ready to drive forward in the direction that he wants the ball to go. In other words, his hand is way left and he's ready to throw the ball right. 
and he, as he comes forward, watch out how he maintains staying behind the ball until now, until the very end when he's finally ready to release. And as I progress with my own game, these are the foundations that I realized if I focus on, I get better. Keep my hand under the ball. Keep the ball under the shoulder. Maintain the external rotation of my arm through the entire approach until the point of release. If I could do it all over again, the way I would learn how to hold the ball in a controlled fashion would be to stay with very lightweight balls, maybe 10 pounds. And with a 10 pound ball, and you don't need to buy a 10 pound ball, you just use a 10 pound house ball, you can play around with how do you hold the ball? What makes most sense for you? Should you go fingertip? Should you be like me, you know, dig your fingers all the way into the ball? Do you have your fingers spread apart? Are they close together? Exactly how do you manipulate you know, the ball in your hand, in your forearm, in your body, so it's calm, so your hand is comfortably under the ball. And, you know, I would just kind of pose this question out there. If someone cannot comfortably hold the ball with their hand under in a controlled fashion, that's, if they can't do that with a 10-pound house ball, then why should they run out and spend a bunch of money on a 15-pound, you know, ball that, you know, they have not yet learned how to control. And I've seen recreational bowlers who don't even have their own ball yet, but they've just been working on this, um, you know, holding the ball this way. You know, no one's taught them to do this. It's just, you know, they're not so immediately serious that they want to run out and buy a ball, but they actually start working on this and they have their good fundamentals down. And then conversely, I've seen, you know, people with their arsenal of 15 pound bowling balls yet they, they they have like this you know circular shoving down you know you know motion so the easiest way to kind of get the fundamentals down is you don't have to spend a lot of money on different bowling balls and all that stuff just pick up a 10 maybe 12 pound house ball and play around with how to hold it and i'm going to go into a simple drill demonstrating this. This is me demonstrating a simple 10 pound house ball practice drill. And the point of this drill is just to focus on how does it feel for the ball to sit in your hand with the hand under the ball, the hand maintaining external rotation throughout the entire swing until the release point. You don't have to worry about score. No one is going to score well with a 10 pound house ball. Um, the ball may also slip out of your hand a little. Um, almost all of these shots, the ball is slipping out of my hand left. That's because it's not like I took a bunch of bowler's tape and put it in there to make the ball fit my hand well. Um, this is my one shot in the middle with a 14-pound reactive ball. Um, just Sometimes it's interesting to go back and forth with the weight. Uh, with this, you don't want to throw the ball too hard. Yeah, you can throw the 10-pound ball 20 miles an hour down the lane. That would defeat the purpose of the drill. The drill is to learn how to have a good control um, swing. And it's just practice again, staying under the ball with the arm externally rotated. It's kind of like what I demoed before in my room. Being able to hold the ball that way, that's the most fundamental thing that I think a one-hand, no-thumb bowler can um, learn how to do. And if I could start this all over again, this is just what I would have done at the beginning. And then once I got this down, then I would have moved on to a 12 pound reactive ball. These are some shots of myself in the summer of 2019 after I've been bowling without my thumb for about 10 months. And this is with a 14 pound ball. Now, and at the time, I was really happy with the progress I was making, and in a way, this is good progress for someone who's only been bowling this way for 10 months. But in hindsight, um, I am dropping my arm down straight very quickly, which is putting a lot of pressure on my elbow and wrist. I also have a lot of loopiness to my arm swing, so it's making it hard to be consistent. And the other thing is, even though I'm getting my fingers under the ball, my, I'm grabbing the ball from like the right side and you know, I'm kind of coming around the ball underneath to get my fingers underneath that. My hand isn't behind the ball. So at the very least, I should have intermixed some practice with a 10 pound ball working on the fundamentals and that really would have cleaned up my game. 
it's a little strange that no one who knows me from bowling leagues or tournaments is ever going to walk up to me and ask my opinion on anything about bowling as if I'm some type of expert. Um, the people who will do that, though, is if I'm practicing and there are some newbies who are just like recreational bowlers and they're trying to one hand, no thumb it. At times they do come up to me to try to get some advice and I will try to help them. Um, so I try to do this from the perspective that I'm just some guy who's put a lot of work into studying the game and learning how to bowl this way myself. I'm not a bowling coach. I'm not a professional bowler. I'm not a pro shop guy. I am nothing of the sort. I am a naturopathic doctor by profession. Uh, this is just something I do because I like bowling. So I always want to put the disclaimer that this is not professional advice. And actually, what I consider myself simply sharing my own experience and what I have learned. I'm not telling anyone what to do. But still, people will ask me questions. And one question that has come up, whether online or just people walking up to me in person, is they're trying to learn how to bowl this way. What ball should they get? What weight? I, I am going to make a very comprehensive ball weight video because I have a lot to say about that. Uh, but it's really not going to be helpful, in, in my opinion, to start flinging a 15-pound bowling ball around doing who knows what with it if you don't have these basics down. If you do have a heavy ball and you're struggling with it, what I would do in that situation if I was starting out is I would pick up a 10 to 12 pound house ball, take some practice shots, throwing it more correctly, then even in the same session, then pick up the 15 pound ball or whatever you have and try to replicate the same motion with that 15 pound ball and to go back and forth and doing it that way. And I think um, that will yield much better progress than, you know, again, doing who knows what with the ball that's too heavy.